Let us now understand about the demand or the revenue curve of a firm under perfect competition. Now before I go and explain to you the concept of all these things, let's first understand what is a perfect competition. Now perfect competition is a situation wherein you have a large number of buyers okay and you have a large number of sellers so what happens is that there is a large number of buyers okay such that if one of the buyers or some one of them goes out it doesn't affect the competition similarly if one of the sellers moves out it doesn't affect the competition what does this mean this means that there is enough demand insofar as the buyers are concerned that if someone moves out it really doesn't affect the overall demand similarly there are so many suppliers in the market that even if one or more of them goes out it doesn't affect the supply in such a case what happens is that the firm is a price taker what does this mean this means that the firm has to take the price as is determined by the market forces of demand and supply so he one individual seller cannot affect individual seller cannot affect price of goods okay so if even if he wants you know he cannot affect the price of the goods significantly even if he stops supplying the good it does not affect the overall output so what happens is he sells whatever output he has at given prices just like what goes for the seller also goes for the buyer a buyer is also a price taker what does this mean this means that even the buyer has to purchase at the price which is determined by the market forces of demand and supply right there is no bargaining power with the buyer so if this buyer cannot stand out and say so let's say the price of the commodity is rupees 20 in the market he can't go and say okay i'll buy maybe if he's buying currently x quantity i'll buy 2x give this to me at 19 rupees no he doesn't have a bargaining power so he has to accept the market price of 20 right now keeping this in mind let us take a small chart Let's say the quantity sold is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Right? The price per commodity is, let's say, 5. So, what you would notice is that the price remains the same at whatever level of quantities which are sold. Why? Because we are in a perfect competition, right? And therefore, no individual buyer or seller can affect the price. So the price remains constant. Now, if you compute your total revenue, which is going to be what? This into this. Quantity into price. This will come to 5. 5 into 2 gives you 10. 5 into 3 gives you 15. 5 into 4 gives you 20 right 
Now, what is the marginal revenue? Marginal revenue, if you recall, means the incremental revenue received from selling an additional quantum of goods. Right? So, marginal revenue is also given by the formula change in revenue, total revenue divided by change in quantity. You can refer to the earlier videos for this. So revenue, total revenue is this. So if you see from 0 it has increased to 5. Then 5 divided by 0 to 1, 1. So it gives you 5. Here if you see, what is the change in total revenue? 10 minus 5, 5 divided by change in quantity. So quantity has increased from 1 to 2. So 2 minus 1, 1 is equal to 5. You can similarly compute and in all the cases you will find that the marginal revenue is 5. Right? Now if you compute the average revenue, average revenue is what? Total revenue divided by quantity. So this divided by this. So 5 divided by 1 gives you 5. Right? 10 divided by 2 gives you 5. 15 divided by 3 again gives you 5. And 20 divided by 4 again gives you 5. Now if you go and draw If you go and draw this data on an x-axis and a y-axis, let's say the y-axis represents the revenue, okay, and the x-axis represents the quantity, right? Now, if, let's say we first draw. What do you want to draw first? Let's draw the total revenue and the quantity. So 1, 2, 3, 4, revenue, right. So when quantity is 1, total revenue is 5, 1, 5. When quantity is 2, total revenue is 10, 2, 10. When quantity is 3, total revenue is 15. So 3 and 15, you get it here. 4, 20. So 4, 20. Now if you join these lines, you get the total revenue curve. Let's draw the marginal revenue. Again, when it is 5, this is 5. Let me draw it with a different color. When it is 2, again it's 5. At 3, again the marginal revenue is 5. At 4, again it's 5. So this curve represents my marginal revenue. Average revenue, in fact, if you see, because both the values are same, so this curve is going to also represent the average revenue. Right? Price. Price again is 5 altogether. So this curve also represents the price at various quantities. Why? Because if you start drawing at one quantity, the price is 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5. This represents the price as well. Right? And this basically is also the demand curve. Also, you can represent it as D. Why? Because this shows the quantity demanded at various prices. So just to recapitulate, under perfect competition, there are a large number of buyers and large number of sellers in the market, right? 
large number of buyers and large number of sellers in the market, no individual buyer can affect the price at which the goods are purchased. No individual seller can similarly affect the price of purchase. They are the price takers. Whatever is the price, they have to buy or sell the commodities. There's no bargaining power with the buyers, right? And even the sellers cannot affect the price. They have to sell the commodity at given prices. If that be the case, the price of the commodity does not change with a change in quantity demanded or quantity supplied, which if we plot gives us a marginal revenue which is constant, average revenue which is constant, total revenue increases proportionately with the increase in quantity of goods. If we draw this on a, this, we get a demand curve which is a straight line and the demand curves is also representative of the marginal revenue, average revenue and the price right 